Hello and welcome to this tutorial in which we are going to make a very simple waypoint system. Um, again, if you find any part of this video useful, please like, subscribe, pause the comment below, any suggestions for future content. Um, okay, let's get going. So I'm going to just stop this. I'm going to create a new scene so we can go from scratch. So empty scene. Uh, now I'll press it. I'll save changes. So I'm just going to add a quick uh, plane to act as some ground. I'm going to drag a grass texture on because it's nice to look at. Uh, I'm going to add a capsule. This capsule is going to act as my waypoint. So I'm just going to move this over to the side, into this corner. Um, I'm going to come up here, I'm going to tag this because we use the tags in the code to find the waypoints. You can see I've already got a waypoint tag. If you don't know how to add, just press add. You can press the plus sign and just type in whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to call that new tag now. I'll delete that in a little while. So I can come back onto my capsule and we'll say uh, waypoint. I can now duplicate this, so Shift D to duplicate, nope, Control D to duplicate, there we go, nope, Control D to duplicate, there we go, so we jump between this and Blender, Control D to duplicate, Control D to duplicate, so I've now got four waypoints on my scene, they're a bit below the ground level, where are they up to, um, okay, I'm just going to set these to be at the zero axis, so Okay, I'll bring them back up to one. There we go, the halfway one. That'll be good in a little while. Okay, so there's my waypoints. Don't worry about being able to see them because we can always turn them off later. Um, so what we're going to do next, I'm going to add our little character, um, which is just going to be a sphere for now. So there's my little sphere. That's going to be my character. I'm going to move him down to zero coordinates as well. No, nope, bring him up to one, just so he's the same height as my waypoints. Obviously, you can feel free to move yours around a little bit. I'm also going to add just a little cube so we can see what the front of this object is. Uh, if I add a little cube, I'm going to shrink this down a little bit, move that to the front, no need to do anything fancy because we'll replace these a little bit later anyway. So I've now got a little thing where I can see the front of it. Um, okay, so that's our character. I now need a script to make him follow these waypoints. Uh, I can just close that off. I'm just going to create a new script, so I'll create C Sharp script. I'm just going to call this uh, waypoints. Okay, so now into Visual Studio. So the first thing I am going to use uh, is to create is some global variables. And as we thought for my scripts, they are just going to be global, which is not great, but uh, they'll do for what I need. So I'm just going to create four of them at first. So one is a game object array. So this is going to create all of my waypoints. Uh, the current point that I'm looking at, so which waypoint am I staring at first? How many waypoints have I got? And then the target. So this is going to be one that we want to aim towards. Um, do I need anything else? No more at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to go into my start menu, and this is why I needed to tag them because the first thing I'm going to do is get all of those waypoints from the scene. Um, so that's going to grab those from the scene. Um, I'm going to just now create the belt, assign the variable, so that I want to know how many waypoints have I got. I keep, I could keep with this function call, but I just find it more convenient if I know how many waypoints are, I've got all together. Um, and then the first thing I need to do. Is, is set the, my size on the first waypoint. So it doesn't matter where we are in the, in the Unity project, in the scene, it'll go, go for the first one. So that's a starting point. Um, if I just try this, so I'm just going to wait for that to compile. I'm going to be able to click on my sphere, which of course is my character player. I'll just minimize that for the moment. I'm going to drag my waypoint code on. Um, we should be able to see, yeah, there's nothing global, there's nothing public right now. But if I was to just press play now, it should start looking at our first waypoint. And it hasn't. Um, I do like how it always calls me a liar on these little things. Oh, I know why, because I've not set the look at point. Never mind, we'll come to that in a moment. So I'm going to go back into the code, I'm going to come down to update. And the first thing I'm going to do, and this is the bit that I should have done first, but I just forgot where I was in my own code, is I'm going to say transform.lookat, so I want to look at the target, so in this case the target is our first waypoint and then I'm going to translate, which is basically we're going to move our character in the forward direction multiplied by the speed multiplied by our frame rate. Now I've not set this variable just yet, so I'm just going to come up here, I'm just going to go public, velocity, yep, yeah. velocity equal, I forgot to use the data type, float, velocity equals and this is where you can choose how fast would you like yours to go by default now i'm just going to say five units for now so it's going to multiply by five so that's the speed of our character and there's a reason i do this on public is because you'll want to change these settings without having to come back to the code 
over and over. So let's pop back into Unity itself. Let's press play. And we should now see him starting to move towards our first waypoint. There we go, he's now looking, but he doesn't know what to do now because it's got there. What do I do now? Nothing. It's just going to keep heading towards it. So it's stuck in a, in a glitch. It's not a problem. We're going to now do a little bit of code to check the distance. Now, I could use hitboxes. I could use our colliders, but I don't actually like doing that. Um, I can't remember why. I just think many years ago when I was dabbling with this, it didn't work for me. So I'm going to create, um, I'm going to check the distance. Now, this is basically Pythagoras. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm being lazy and I'm not doing it right now. I'm saying if vector 3 distance, uh, that's just whinging because I've not actually finished the brackets and things. I was trying to talk about the code before I went any further, and I've also missed something else out. I just misclicked where I was putting this bit of code. This needs to be inside the update function. Oh, now it's got very, very upset. Um, there we go. Okay, so basically, after we've moved it, I want to just go if the distance between our target position and our current position, and it's less than our tolerance. Now, again, this is another variable that I want to introduce for tolerance. I'm going to come up here, and again, I'm making this public so we can fiddle with it inside Unity itself. Is that how I spelt it down before? Below? Yeah, uh, I struggle with some of these words. And I'm saying tolerance is two. So if it's within two units of the my of the of the waypoint, it's going to trigger this bit of code. So if the distance between these two points is less than two, then action. Like I said, I could use the colliders, but I just find this method. Um, so now it's close to that, I'm just going to say current point plus plus. So I'm just going to add one to it. Um, if if current point, and then this is where you could do something in your code, but for mine, I'm saying if the current point is greater than or equal to our number of points, so if we've reached our final point, then I'm just going to say current point equals zero, so it goes back to the beginning. Um, yes, I'm doing it all on one line of code. I think this looks neater. This is my style. If I have more than one line, then and it's a long line, then obviously I, I put it below. Um, but so we've now got the waypoint. I need to update the waypoint itself. So target equals waypoint current point. Uh, there might be neat ways of doing this, but this way seems to work for me. Dot transform. So this now means update to our next position. Um, so yep, that should be okay now. So if I just press save, I'm going to go back to Unity. Wait for that to compile. Wait for, there we go. So now it should start happily moving between the four waypoints. There is a little downside to this one, there we go, is you never quite know the way that Unity is going to read these code, these bits in. So when I said um, waypoints equals find objects with tag, we never actually know the exact order it's going to find them in. So the path might not always work the way you want. Um, just to give you an insight into this, this is how I did uh, the tracks on my little rail shooter that's on Steam. So if you want to support this channel, please feel free to go and purchase that game. But I basically did the same thing in Blender. I used an array modifier to create a whole track. Um, and then I have these waypoints. And you can see over here, waypoint one, two, three, four. And then I use a sorting algorithm within Unity to sort these into numerical order. And I just simply hide them. So if you play that game, the waypoints are on the physical track. They're just hidden, unless I've made a simple mistake. Um, okay, so um, that's pretty much working now. That's how we can do a simple waypoint system. But we're not going to we're not going to stop there. We're going to do a bit more because right now that looks a little bit rough. The other thing I want to show you is the tolerance. Um, and again, the reason why I made it, you can see it's not quite getting there. But if I come over to our code, I can just change the tolerance down a little bit until it gets a little bit closer. Now, what you really need is the bigger the tolerance for the faster you're going. When I did the railroad game, I had to do a lot of play testing to make sure that the rail cart followed the track smoothly without making you feel sick or bypassing waypoints. Um, okay, so the next thing to do is this is going like sudden death. We can see it. It flicks direction immediately. I want to smooth that out a little bit. So I'm going to jump back into the code. Um, I'm now going to create another new variable, like do I want this to be smooth or not? So I'm going to create two new variables, and those two new variables are smooth, is it true or false? Do we want it to be smooth, do we not? And if I do want it to be smooth, how fast do I want to rotate towards the new object? So in this case, I'm just going to go with five. I already know that's too fast, but it's just our starting number. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to wrap this up in a, in a if statement, in some selection. If smooth um, equal equals false, 
then I want to do this little block of code. Obviously, if it's not false, I want to do this next block of code. And we'll still use the checkpoint where it is. So we're going to do a bit of maths, uh, a bit of fancy maths now. And I'll, I'll train to this a line at a time. Um, so we're going to do something called slurp which I forgot what the S stands for, but LERP is for Linear Interpolation. I think it might be Smooth Linear Interpolation, I'll look that up. Um, but it allows you to transition between two numbers over time. So a quaternion is basically how 3D rotations work. Um, you have X, Y, Z and a W, and I'm not going to try and explain that here and now. Uh, but this is how we do proper 3D rotations using the called quaternions. Um, rather than vectors. I don't know how to pronounce it by the way, I've never heard anyone actually say it out loud. It's been a long time since I researched it. So either way, we're going to have our rotation, which is our look rotation, and we're going to take away our target's position from our current position. Um, if you don't understand this or don't want to understand it, that's absolutely fine. Treat it like a bit of black box maths, it just works. We're then going to start to transform our rotation by using this slurp function, and it's going to use the time and our rotation speed to slowly transition between these two angles. And then finally we can do the same line as before, which is just to move in the direction we are facing. So whichever way is forward for, the, for your object, that's the way we're going to move. So I'm still using the same speed, but this time I'm using rotation speed for our turn speed. So if I now press save, we can pop back into Unity, and hopefully we should have... Still compiling. Um, the code's now updated automatically, I've not had to press stop and play. But if I now press the tick box for smooth, we should see it, there we go, going through slight curves instead. It just looks a lot nicer. Now again, if I start to speed this up, it'll start to eventually overshoot things where it starts to struggle a little bit. Um, so you can have a bit of fun on this. Don't do it in VR, it will make you ill. I'll bring that down to velocity of two, obviously a bit too slow now. Um, rotation speed, we could change these speeds a bit so it's obviously a whole lot faster. Or we could bring it right down to zero so it's almost instant. Oh, or not at all in this case. There we go. Um, now also, if this was following you, by the way, this same script would work. If I grab this capsule now and start moving it, he has to sort of chase me now a little bit. So you could have this following you um, as, a, as in your game as a character. And the further away you are, the, the more the faster it has to go or something. So either way, that's how we can make a simple, smooth waypoint system. Now just to show you this, if we blend this with um, a tutorial from the other week, if I go into my scene two, where's my other scenes? Scenes, into my next waypoint. Uh, yeah, I'll save the change to that. Oh, I've not given it a name. Let's call it waypoint tut. There we go. I've, what I've done is I've mixed this with, um, with, with the catch from Mixamo. Now this ball here, we don't have to worry about that. That was me just doing a, a checkpoint debug thing to make sure um, it was updating the, the waypoint I was looking at. Okay, so now we should see him walking towards our checkpoint. Again, the tolerance isn't great, so let's click on our waypoint controller. So all I've done is I've still got the sphere just there. I've just hidden it, and I've dragged on, I've parented my walking animation. So there's nothing fancy there, I've just dragged it over. And again, I can change the speed a little bit. So I can take the smooth box, and it should start to walk a little bit smoother. I can change the tolerance down a little bit so it gets a whole lot closer. And you can see it's moving that little debug sphere. There's no need for that whatsoever. It was just for me to make sure it was heading in the right direction. So we can basically have a character now moving. So if you're playing a game where you want some stealth mode or hide the bad guys, um, they're walking on paths until they see you, this is how you can do it. You could also even change this to, this is not going to look great by the way, um, is that the right one? That is not the right one, there we go, that one. So you could even attach the same code to something like a barrel, which might be in a game where you've got to jump onto the barrel as it's moving, so it could be, you could use it for sliding platforms. Okay, I think that's enough for this uh, video right now, so if you found this useful, like I said, please press like, please subscribe, post a comment below, share it with friends. Um, if you do anything cool with it, give send me a link, let me know, um, and I shall see you in the next video. So why does programming sometimes take so long? This is my normal code for how the vehicle follows the rails. Um, the yellow pyramids are the waypoints, the little yellow capsule is telling me which one the next one is. This is just used for debugging. This is the same code I've used for months. 
um, the track's made in blender it follows on quite nicely as it should behaving as it should but as we get a bit further around the track um, it suddenly stops behaving so the code down here is telling me what the target is um, telling me where it's aiming and there we go it suddenly starts to glitch and it'll glitch a bit more and then it goes completely wappy if I pause it for a second so we can see the capsule down there the waypoint is currently 91 aiming towards target uh, 92 here's the coordinates of where it should be aiming but if I click on waypoint 92 I get this waypoint it should be heading there but it's not it's heading over it and I have no idea why I've been using the same code for ages I've spent ages looking at it uh, there's no good reason why it shouldn't be working it's just not I'm sure by the time I solve it it will come down to simply two lines of code 